Um, so in recent years, we've seen a huge online proliferation of video. We have so many different video sharing websites right now. We have YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, Hulu, Netflix, and so many other different kinds of video hosting websites, each with a massive amount of video. So let's look at YouTube alone. Right? YouTube has 144 million videos, and every single minute, there are 35 hours of video that are being uploaded. So what does that mean? That basically means that manual classification is practically impossible. Now why is classification even important at all? Classification becomes really important when we have the issue of censorship, where we need to automatically filter out offensive content. And we see with adult content, we already have existing filter software. Um, you know, a very well-known one is Google Safe Search that automatically filters out um, you know, adult content. How about we see that there's no real analog for violent content? And so based on that motivation, we present to you the result of many all-nighters and hundreds of hours of work, a system to automatically detect violence in movies. Um, my name is Matt, and this is my partner, Lei, and together we're going to be presenting to you the system. So start off with our problem statement. What we've aimed to do is to build a system to automatically and robustly detect violence in movies. Given a movie, we extract visual and audio features and build a predictive model that's able to classify the individual segments within the video that are violent. Now, I just use two big words here. First word, I use the word robust. Now, what does that mean? Robust means the ability to work in a variety of different and realistic settings. Basically, that means many different kinds of portrayals of violence, many different characters, um, across many different kinds of scenes. It also means that it's able to work in difficult movie conditions, such as motion blur, um, or poor lighting conditions, or even occlusion, where the character is blocked by something else. The other way I use was automatic, it's a little bit more self-explanatory, um, basically working without any kind of human supervision to filter out and detect violent content. So why is a system like this so important? Right? The first thing, as we talked about, is for the ability to automatically filter and censor, and, and censor violent material, you know, especially for use within parental control software to prevent access to violent content by the kids. Another huge application is automatic surveillance, where you can have unmanned camera systems that automatically detect violent activity and trigger a police alert. Right. So you know, here's how we're going to be presenting to you our system today. First, we'll start off with an analysis of what constitutes a violent scene, uh, and then we're going to be talking about how we built our system um, basically around that motivation, starting off with a set of input. Um, we then extract visual and audio features and finally build a predictive model. Um, and finally, we're going to be talking about some future work um, to really commercialize a product like this. So let's start off. Violence 101, the anatomy of a violent scene. What happens in violent scenes? We say that four main things that happen based on the results of watching many, many violent movies. So the first one, as you can see over here, um, we see there is punching, you know, a violent motion. There is punching here. From this second scene, we see that there are two main things. The first one is we see the presence of a weapon, such as a handgun. And next, we see heightened volume. There's more shouting, you hear gunshots, and that kind of thing. Right? And finally, the fourth... Oops. Um, well, in the fourth one, you can see the look of anguish on someone's face. On the victim's face, a look of anger on a perpetrator's face. Basically, that there's strong negative facial emotions in violent scenes. So it's around these four feature sets that we have designed our system. Right? So these are the four things that motivate how we design our system. So basically, you know, before I talk about how we looked at all these individual feature sets, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the kind of inputs um, that we're working with. So we start off with a set of 20 movies, you know, popular titles like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, and then what we do is we perform an algorithm called shot segmentation. Basically, a movie is composed of many, many different shots that are strung together, where we define a shot to be one single conti continuous camera sequence. Now, when we see in this scene over here, um, we see that this is one single scene that happens in the movie, but you see that there are two camera sequences. So what the algorithm does is automatically detects when there are breaks in, the continue, um, in these camera sequences and splits them up into shots. And we work with the shot level to classify individual shots as violent and nonviolent. Um, so just a little bit more information. We worked with 20 movies that correspond to 36,000 shots, um, of which about 6% of them are actually violent. Um, and when we built this experiment to test the accuracy of the system, we worked with a set of about 1,000 violent and nonviolent shots and used everything else to build a model. So now for the juicy stuff, how we actually 
extracted these features to build this predictive model. So the first one, as I talked about, is looking at action recognition. Right? And we use a technique called spatial temporal interest points. Basically what that does is it picks up points in the video where there is sudden acceleration. And you can see in this video, there's sudden acceleration right over here as the weapon enters the chest. There is one more over here in the back as there's a jerk back reaction. Right? And so basically the hypothesis here is that specific combinations of these points correspond to specific actions. Right? Let me give you a really simple example of someone walking. You see that the points are detected right here between the split of the feet as well as the feet as the feet opens. And as the feet come together again, there's again another collection of points that are detected over here. Now when you see patterns of these things continuously occurring, you can infer that someone is walking. And in the exact same way, we detect when violent actions occur. So the next one, violent emotion recognition. Basically, again, the intuition here is that violent scenes have violent people with violent faces. Right? So the first thing we do is we need to detect these faces. So we run face detectors over um, our entire movie set, and then we automatically extract the eyes and the mouth. What we next do is a technique called principal component analysis. And what it does is it basically first figures out there's a set base of principal eyes and mouth, and every new eye and mouth that comes in can be reconstructed using a combination of these sets of bases. Now looking at these sets of weights, we can then build a model to figure out what the violent face looks like um, and run this model across our entire movie set to figure out um, and be able to detect when violent faces occur. I'm going to now hand it off to my partner, Lee. Thank you, Matt. So the third feature set that our system employs is gun detection. As many of you would probably agree, a lot of violence in movies today involves some sort of weapon. And for the overwhelming majority of cases, this weapon is a handgun. And much like our face detection, we need to build a mathematical model of a handgun to detect instances of those guns in movies. And to do so is a multi-step process. The first of which is to build a 3D model of a handgun using Maya, which is a 3D image modeling software program. And taking this 3D model, we can generate different camera views, lighting conditions, as well as backgrounds, and create a mathematical representation of a handgun or a detector to find instances of the same gun in movies. So, once we have this detector, we can run it across every single shot of every single movie, and we can generate a list of confidences of gun detections calculated for every shot. The fourth and final feature set our system employs is audio spectrum analysis. As Matt mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, most violent scenes involve some sort of loud sound, a gunshot or a shout or even just loud background music. And to capitalize on this intuition, what we do is we analyze the energy across every frequency over time for each shot. We do so using a short time Fourier transform. And as you can see on the graph on the bottom of this slide, oh, yeah, there we go. Yes, our intuition is reflected in the data. On average, violent shots are louder than nonviolent ones. And now I have the honor of presenting a short, few short clips of our system in action. The first one was a very short one from Mr. and Mrs. Smith. As you can see, there was neither a gun nor a face in the clip. And in the slowed down version, you'll notice, however, that it does um, show a high level of motion as well as loud sounds. However, whoops, the next clip from The Departed is significantly different. In this clip, there is virtually no motion at all. And also there is sustained shouting, but no loud sounds as there were before. With the slowed down version of the clip though, you can see that our system does correctly identify a violent face. And for most of the clip, the gun that is involved in the shot as well. And what these two clips show is that in the wild, there's a huge amount of variation in violent shots. That is, you know, there are shots with loud music, no music, shots with motion, no motion, some shots have guns, some don't. And by combining all four feature sets, our system gains robustness against these types of variations. Moving on is the machine learning component of our system. What machine learning does is it tries to find distinctive features that are best able to distinguish a shot as either violent or nonviolent. Our system employs two techniques 
to further this goal, the first is called Support Vector Machines, SVMs for short. Basically, if each shot could be expressed as a point in 2D space, an SVM would be able to find a line that can best divide the space into violent and nonviolent examples. And as the dimensionality of your data increases, this line becomes a hyperplane. The second technique our system employs is called adaptive boosting. Adaptive boosting is a weighted combination of small decision trees. A decision tree tries to divide your data into two groups based on single features at a time, for example, whether or not a gun was detected. And adaptive boosting, or Adaboost for short, combines these decision trees to make a final decision. And as you've all been probably awaiting quite eagerly, our results. Using the two machine learning techniques I just discussed separately, our system achieves quite similar results, so around 70% accuracy for both. Our final system classifies a movie as violent if either of the underlying components classifies that movie as violent. I mean, that shot is violent, sorry. And we achieve an improved accuracy score of 71.4%. A much more informative description of our system's performance is that are the precision recall curves. And in this context, precision is the ability of the system to not misclassify nonviolent shots, whereas recall is the ability of the system to capture all the violent shots. And which one is more important depends on your application. For both content filtering and automatic camera surveillance, you would probably prefer higher recall. That is, you would like to ensure that your system can capture every single violent shot, and you would not mind if the system throws a false alarm every once in a while. And as you can see, with the graph on the left, our system is well suited for these types of applications. As you increase recall, precision only falls quite gradually, and is thus quite good for automatic camera surveillance and content filtering. And now, I'll suggest a few directions that future work could take, the first of which is improving accuracy. Because our system is the sum of its parts by improving the underlying models, for example, the gun detection or the violent emotion detection, the performance of the system would also improve as well. Other improvements could be the speed. Our system currently operates about two to three times slower than real time you might want more speed depending on your application. And the final suggestion would be to extend the scope of the system. By including online videos and surveillance camera footage when training the model, our system would gain robustness against those types of data. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and now I'd like to open it up to questions.